Hello again, and welcome back to part two of the Amazon Detective automating security investigations with the Amazon Detective API demonstration. Now that we're in the console, I want to start by enabling Amazon Detective in a fresh standalone account and show you the process. Now once enabled, Amazon Detective will begin the training period of two weeks, so many of the behavior graphs and panels and visualizations provided through the Amazon Detective API will lack information and insights. So remember to add as many accounts as possible during the training period per the user guide best practices. You will get a 30-day free trial to use Amazon Detective and try out its features. So from the console homepage, you can either click on Detective if it's recently visited, or you can search for it up in the search bar. Now once here, you very simply just click Get Started. And it'll give you options to read about or align administrator accounts if your account is part of an AWS organization, which this one is not. And then you can also read information on required permissions for administrator accounts. So you start by clicking Enable Amazon Detective. Now again, there's not going to be any visualizations or graphs providing insights yet because we just enabled the service going through the summary page, the finding groups, the investigations, none of that information is populated as of yet. So now what I want to do is shift over to an AWS account inside of an AWS organization where Detective has been running for some time with plenty of resources and demonstration opportunity. Okay, so first I want to show you how the Amazon Detective portal is configured in an account where the service has been running well past the training period and has many resources and logs to ingest. So I'll go through the summary page and highlight the features discussed during the presentation. We start off with investigations right here on the top. Now investigations, here's where you can see the most recent investigations or start one manually. Recall that investigations focus on IAM users or roles using indicators of compromise, this came from video one, to really focus on those entities and help identify malicious activity with high levels of confidence. So if you don't see any that are actively running, you would click on Run Investigation. And over here, you can choose a recommended resource to run an investigation on and really peel back the layers, or you can specify an AWS role or user with an ARN. Next on the summary page are finding groups. Here's where the Amazon Detective API displays finding groups, which are assembled from behavior graph data and Amazon Guard Duty findings, and produce an examination of multiple activities as they relate to a potential security event. Now, threat actors will perform malicious activities across time and resources. This feature graphs and links them together. So let's start by clicking on one of the finding groups, which are automatically generated based on observed behavior from Amazon Detective. When you look through the finding group, you read a summary of the suspicious behavior on the left. This really identifies the root cause of the incident, potentially, providing an immediate investigation starting point should that be necessary. On the right-hand side are the observed tactics the malicious actor took and below is the visualization graph. The graph is truly a representation of the relationship of behaviors between the entities and findings associated with the malicious activity. Over the course of the incident, the Amazon Detective API helps generate this visualization through automation to assist your expeditious investigations. Okay, now that we've gone through the investigations and finding groups features, I want to continue our demo by examining the other panels and their purpose in the summary page. The next are roles and users with the most API call volume, and then EC2 instances with the most traffic volume. These panels provide great insights, so if you identify a user or role for which the API call volume seems suspicious, or an EC2 instance with suspicious levels of traffic, you can pivot directly from the panel to that user, role, or EC2 profile to continue your investigation. You can also view the profile of the account associated with the resource, and to view a profile, choose the user, role, EC2 instance, or account identifier. Very similar to the previous two panels we looked at, 
The next panel for examination is the container clusters with the most pods created. This panel provides you with evidence and insights to potentially compromised EKS resources. If you identify a cluster during your investigation which has recent findings, you can pivot directly from the panel to the cluster profile to continue your investigation. You can also pivot to the profile of the account that owns the cluster. To pivot to a profile, choose the cluster name or account identifier. So as you build your incident response playbooks and processes, it's important to understand your traffic patterns, specifically where traffic ought to originate from, which is what the newly observed geolocations will indicate for you over the last 24 hours. The newly observed geolocations panel highlights geographic locations that were the origin of, of activity during the previous 24 hours, but were not seen during the baseline time period before that. For each geolocation, the table displays the number of failed and successful API calls made from that geolocation over the last 24 hours. And you can see the circles on the map and then the location much more specific. For the final piece of this demonstration, I'd like to examine the context on what an investigation looks like from start to finish. Understanding that malicious behavior can take many different forms, tactics, and techniques, AWS has a suite of security services to help identify and speed up the time required to accurately pinpoint the root cause of the security event which led to the investigation. The Amazon Detective API again helps drive these efforts and automation with ingestion of data and findings to support the creation of management and behavior graphs, leveraging machine learning, statistical analysis, and graph theory under the hood. Now, if you recall from video one, AWS documentation points to an investigation flow diagram. Obviously, an investigation may take any number of turns, but I wanted to follow this model originating from a guard duty finding and then pivoting over to Amazon Detective. So we'll, we'll use the flow that's in front of us. We'll find an entity to investigate, then we'll pivot over and analyze visualizations of the finding detail, look at the entity profile, and then from there we'll decide that, okay, this is the root cause and we'll take some action based on that investigation. Okay, so let's pretend for a moment you have your workloads all running in AWS, you have guard duty enabled across all regions per best practices. Security hub and detective are both enabled as well. And you have several Amazon event bridge rules set up to alert you and your security team of any critical or high guard duty findings. Now, once you receive the email or alert, it's your job to begin investigating the entity, surrounding behaviors, and ultimately the root cause and take action. Okay, so once we've been notified or alerted of the finding or potential security incident, we jump into the guard duty console. Now what we'll do is just pick the top one. It's a high severity, a finding type of impact, EC2, malicious domain request and reputation. So let's click on that finding. Now once we're in the guard duty finding, there's a lot of information that we could start being overwhelmed with or start investigating individually we can immediately see that this EC2 instance is querying a low reputation domain that is associated with known malicious domains. So this is concerning egress traffic from an EC2 instance that may have already been compromised by malware. There's a lot of options we can go down here. So just basic scrolling of the guard duty finding, we can get a quick overview. We can look at resources affected, the instance details, the IAM instance profile, that's concerning as well. Um, but instead of viewing all of this information individually, right here on all the guard duty findings, we can use this investigate with detective and we can pivot directly to detective. So if we click on this, it basically gives us four options. Now I can go to the guard duty finding and get the overview in detective of this finding. I can go to the entity profile of the EC2 instance, which is associated with this finding. I can view the AWS account holistically or from an overview, or I can go directly to the IP address, the public IP address of the EC2 instance. And just for the sake of thoroughness, I've also opened up Security Hub. So Security Hub is our cloud security posture management service and it ingests findings from all of our security services as well as um, maintains and tracks controls from security standards and frameworks. 
And so if you filter by the product name Guard Duty, among other filters, you can actually find all of these same findings in Security Hub. And the neat thing about Security Hub, if this is your single pane of glass to view alerts and notifications on, if you click on it, well, you can see the EZ2 instance is the same name, but you can pivot to Amazon Detective directly from Security Hub as well. Okay, but this just allows you to investigate just the finding, not all the thorough options that are there in Guard Duty. So for the purposes of this investigation, we'll do our initial pivot over to Amazon Detective from the Guard Duty console. Now, because this finding is surrounded around an EC2 instance making egress communication or outbound calls to a low reputation domain, as a security professional, that's where I want to start my investigation. Okay, so we'll just start by clicking on this EC2 instance link, which opens up another tab directly into the Amazon Detective portal. Now what we've done is we've focused our investigation on the initial entity to investigate. Amazon Detective performs the initial security investigation for you, and now we can start seeing and uncovering all the details and behaviors around that EC2 instance. Now we're on step one of the investigation flow displayed earlier. At this point, we're on the finding overview and summary page of the EC2 instance we know to be making outbound communication to a potential malicious domain. Let's investigate that. So on the right hand side, we have all the related details of the instance in question. And because of the captured behavior, which appears anomalous, this may be a good place to start hunting for the root cause and eventually take action. So we have the overview, the affected resource, the instance details, the IAM instance profile. Do we know where that instance profile came from? Is the naming convention appropriate? Is it tagged properly? We have instance tags on this EC2 instance. So we know if this instance was stood up by us or not. And we have the network interfaces in information. And down here under the action, we know it was a DNS request using UDP protocol outbound to the actor or domain we know that malicious domain was communicated with. So why is that malicious domain being communicated to? Is it on our um, threat IP list or threat names list? Hmm, it's a really good thing to start investigating or something to immediately block so this outbound communication can stop. Okay, so if we're done looking at the finding overview on the right hand side, we can look at the summary page of the EC2 instance. So here we can find all other findings associated with this resource. So if there's other malicious behavior that Guard Duty captured coming from this instance, we can start investigating those or pivot to those findings as well. I see that there's a lot of findings, both from Security Hub and Guard Duty, which are associated with this EC2 instance. The investigation is beginning to gain clarity as we move into step two of the investigation flow. The CC2 instance is either compromised with malware, making outbound calls, or there's an inside threat doing the same. Either way, Detective is providing all the details necessary to speed this process up. So my investigation can pivot in many directions while on step two, but I want to remain focused on the root cause. So up at the top of this EC2 summary, we have new behavior. So if the behavior that we experienced happened, say, in the last 24 hours, or we can change the scope time, this is a good panel and visualization to dive into. Provides the newly observed geolocations, as well as the overall API call volume, successful and fail calls. But again, we're not concerned with the amount of traffic, maybe the specific API calls. We know that we're looking for DNS traffic going outbound. So this might not be the best panel to pivot our investigation to. Let's go back to the overview page and refocus our efforts on findings associated with this resource. So remember we began our investigation from guard duty to the instance, the entity profile. And what we found was this instance's behavior appears to be a single focal point of a lot of outbound traffic to malicious domains. In fact, I see five that were queried just in the last hour. And through reviewing the rest of the findings, I see that this same EC2 instance is now communicating with a cryptocurrency domain. So this very well could be our root cause, the actual instance itself. So what I want to do to wrap up step two is shift away from the entity profile and overview over to the finding detail. 
So if we click on one of these findings, it takes us to the Finding Details page. Now what we see here is the public IP address of that EC2 instance in question has been observed communicating outbound to these malicious domains 57 times just in the last hour. So this is activity that we have to stop and we have to shut down right now. While there may be other findings or entities to investigate, our primary concern is, concern is stopping the activity on this instance. And that would essentially conclude step two of our investigation and takes us immediately into step three of the flow. So now at this point, I would be delegating or taking action on that EC2 instance for forensics. I'd be isolating it. I'd be removing the instance profile, which if we look at the finding detail, we can see the same role has been popping up multiple times throughout this investigation. Or I'd be shutting it down, whatever your procedures dictate. And that's it. We've enabled Amazon Detective, walked through the features, and performed a mock investigation from an alerted guard duty finding. Now I hope this information and video is helpful in your journey to automating and expediting security investigations using Amazon Detective. Thank you.